Hello and welcome again. In the previous video, we computed uh, the public key and the private key for Bob so communication can be done between Alice and Bob. So if you recall what we did last, the video, we computed the public key, which is a 55,3, which is two numbers. So 55 here is the modulus or the number we're going to divide by and get the remainders. Uh, three here is the, the number three is the exponent, it's the public exponent because it's public. And I remember this here is a public, so anyone can see it. Now, Bob has also a private key, which is a number that I can, he can only see, which in this case is 27. Now, I'm going to give you an example here, so a working example on how this uh, is going to work. So, as you remember from last time, x equals to 4, this is going to be our plain text. And we're going to send the ciphertext, of course, and the ciphertext has to be computed by, by Alice. So let's see how Alice is going to do it. So what Alice is going to do is going to take the, the plain text to the e power and then take the remainder when divided by n. So basically what we are doing is uh, 4 to the third power because it's 4 is x, e the exponent here because it's the public exponent here on this side of Bob, that is 3. And we're going to take modulo 55 because n is 55 in this case. Now, he, she can do that because that's, thus all numbers 55 and 3 are just the public key. So she has to compute this. Now, 4 cubed is going to be 64, if you actually go ahead and compute that. And then you take modulo 55, which actually is take 54 divided by 55 and look at the remainder. If you actually do the division and you're going to compute it, uh, you're going to get a number 9. So this 9 that is right here, that's the number that is going to be sent to Bob. So this is the actual ciphertext. So that's the ciphertext here. So what's going to happen here is through the insecure channel, then the number 9 is going to be sent to Bob. So 9 goes here and number 9 is going to be received by Bob. Now remember that all is binary here. So the only reason we are doing a uh, uh, integer uh, with decimal representation is because it makes it easier to write down. But if we wish this was, was in reality, everything here will be done in binary here. So this number 4 will be binary, 9 will be binary, and Bob will receive a binary number. But just to simplify things, we're going to talk about the number 9 here in this case. So 9 is going to be, this is the ciphertext. So this is the ciphertext. Let me write it down. Ciphertext. Now, uh, once Bob uh, receives the ciphertext, what he has to do is now he has to decrypt the message. And now the way he does it is similar to what Alice did. He's going to take this number to this power, to the D power, which is 27, so 9 to the 27, and he's going to take a modulo 55. Okay, so modulo this number here. So let's look at that. And then he's going to decrypt the message. So, so as I mentioned there, the ciphertext is 9. And what Bob has to do is going to take that number, which is the ciphertext. And again, this is just in decimal because it's easier. But otherwise, this should really be a binary here to the 27th power. And it's going to give you this number. You can go ahead and calculate this in uh, the computer here. It's going to give you a number like this. It's going to be a long number. But that's not the plain text, of course, because what he has to do now, he has to take a modulo 55. So you're going to have to take all this number that you see here and divided by 55, the remainder of that is going to be 4. You can actually see that it's 4 because if you see this number here, it ends at 9. So this number minus 4 will be this whole number and it ends at 5, so it's divisible by 5 here. And it's also going to be divisible by 11. Anyway, so I'm getting out of track here. But the point here is that when you take this number and you subtract 4, it's going to be divisible by 55. Or another way to say is just say, take that no whole number, divided by 55, the remainder of that division will give me, will give you 4. Now, you can go ahead and double check that. If you don't believe me, just go ahead, uh, open your computer, and you have to use some software because I believe maybe some calculators, some calculators would allow you to put this long number. But if you use some kind of software for mathematics, put this long number here, or just 9 to the 27, just like this, and then divide it by 55, the remainder will actually be 
4. And this is the actual plain text, so we recuperate the plain text. Now, the reason we could do that, we, the Bob could recuperate the plain text, is because of the choices we made for N, E, and D. If we made the choice correctly, then this is going to work. N is going to give you back the plain text. But you have to make sure that you do exactly as the algorithm for computing, the public key and the private key. Um, and I'm going to show you later why it works. So I'm going to do sort of like a proof, not really a, a kind of proof in mathematics, but kind of explain why you always get the plain text when you take these powers here and then modulo this number here, which is uh, the n number, or well, the product of two primes. All right, so so that's that's it. So that's the example. So in this case, it was uh, a little bit easier to write down because the numbers that were involved were small, but that's not always the case. When you actually apply this in real life for pra practical RSA, the keys are really large, and they have to be large because if otherwise they're not large, then the system can be broken very easily, so it can be cracked. Because RSA, this, the strength of RSA isn't the fact that it is hard to factor uh, integers. That's why factorization of integers is an important key here. Now, if somebody, some time, could find a really fast algorithm for factorization, then the RSA will, work, will not work anymore because RSA is based on the fact that the factorization over the integers is a really hard problem. At least it's not feasible in certain amount of time if the numbers that are involved are large. So that's, the, that's why the numbers that you want to use for the RSA, they have to be large. So in particular, when you choose primes, the primes P and Q have to be large numbers. So this is an example of a value of P, which is this number is right here, this whole number uh, written in decimal notation, this whole thing these three lines, that is a prime number. You call it that P. So that's, that's an, a choice for P. It has to be like this, a, a very large prime. Q is also another large prime. Remember, this is the first part of creating the keys. You have to choose two primes that are large primes. Now, in the example, of course, we didn't choose large primes. Otherwise, we will take us a lot of time to do the computation. We chose small primes just to give you the idea here, but in reality, P and Q should be large primes. Now, N is a product of those two numbers, of this number times that number, and of course that number is gonna be huge because P and Q are, are large. So this N is gonna be a large number. It's a product of this. Now, next thing you do is you're gonna choose the E, and remember the E is chosen from the list from one to phi of N, phi of this number, which I can compute easily because I know P and Q, so it's P minus one times Q minus one, that would be phi of N. And E here would be from one to phi of N minus one. And it has to have the property that the, great co the greatest common divisor between this number and phi of N has to be one. And so this is the number that we chose. This is an exponent. As you can see here, E is a really large uh, number. Now. Remember what I said before, that X fast exponentiation is something that we want to do in RSA because if you imagine here, this is E, this is an exponent. So this is actually the number, number X, whatever X you have to uh, encrypt, which is a number in binary, if you think about it that way, I have to take X to that exponent, which is this huge number, and then mod by N. Now that exponentiation, of course, is gonna take a long time. If you just do it the normal way, then it's gonna take us a very long time. So that's why we're interested in methods to do fast exponentiation. So the, when the when Alice encrypts the message, then she can do it in a fast way because the numbers in, act, in reality involved are really large. D should also be a large number. And then this is an example of a D that it, we, we have here. So this will be D again. Uh, for Bob, because Bob is, this is the private key, there's a whole number. For Bob to decrypt the messages, he has to take whatever uh, ciphertext comes through the channel and take it to this power. Again, the same problem. We need to take powers of really large numbers with le really large exponents. So we, again, need a way to do fast exponentiation. And so, so these are these numbers that I just gave you here are actually examples of PQs, E and Ds that are used in reality for communication.
as you can see they are large the larger they are uh, usually the better the uh, the security is of the system of course you have to trade off between uh, security and how fast you can do the computations now i'm going to stop the video now because this is what's just about the example and show you exactly some of the uh, numbers that are actually involved in the rsa now in the next video what i'm going to do is i'm going to explain a little bit about why this algorithm works and we're going to see also uh, some other uh, techniques or some other things that are involved with the rsa that are important in particular we will talk about fast exponentiation which is again because you can see here exponents are large we need to do fast uh, a fast way to actually do exponents so i'll stop the video now and i will see you in the next video